Okay, so we'll go around and we'll do introductions. Um, and let me just pop open the meeting minutes. Meeting. minutes. There we go. All right, so um, and and I'll uh, we'll do a little process overview of of how things work. So it's about time we had this recorded. Okay, Whoa, this is a very long document at this point. Um, we probably need to split this out into another document. We should probably do one for every year so that we're not just um, having the longest Google Doc ever. Okay. All right, January 18th, 2022. Okay, so introductions. So what we usually go th do is we go through and um, we do uh, so so we we talk about the agenda so I'll do so we'll talk about process uh, introductions um, and then um, you know then I'll fill out the rest of the agenda items so yeah so basically we 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 run the meeting it's about an hour um, so meeting is an hour sometimes uh, for height of GSOC season uh, we sometimes have two meetings a week uh, you know uh, often most most of the year it's just one one meeting a week um, and it's so this is you know like kind of general office hours uh, you know uh, you know this is just time for us to sync up. Uh, debug issues together. You know, work, work, work in a uh, a setting that's not so asynchronous, right? Um, you a lot can get lost in, in communication. So, uh, all right, so let's go around and oh, so actually we'll finish out the process. So basically, one hour. And then, so what we do is, you know, agenda, we, we go around, we get everybody's agenda. Uh, any, you know, what, what would you like to talk about today? And then we um, prioritize based on time. So if somebody has to leave, uh, you know, like within 30 minutes, we'll do theirs first, right? If something is going to take, you know, potentially two hours, we do that last, right? Because uh, this is uh, uh, longer tasks go last. Uh, and that way, you know, if, if we, uh, it's sort of a hop on, hop off situation, right? If you don't have to come right at the beginning of the meeting, obviously it's, it's uh, then you're not going to get, you could potentially not get on the agenda, agenda then. Um, but, uh, you know, it's um, sort of first come, first serve in that, that debugging respect, right? So, um, uh, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so you can drop, basically, if we've covered your thing, you know, feel free to drop, feel free to stick around. Uh, free to drop if we've covered your thing. Agenda items. Uh, or stick around. Because some of these things can go for a long time, as Hashim knows. Um, you know, we can we can end up on this yeah. call for several hours uh, if we're really into debugging. So, okay. Um, all right. So let's do introductions. Um, so, uh, Banesh, did you want to go first? Oh, sure. Okay. So I'll start first. So currently, like I'm from India. I'm Banesh, and I'm from India. Currently, I'm uh, pursuing uh, like I'm, I'm a junior uh, CS undergrad in. Uh, a public university in India, and um, actually I was like uh, kind of pretty new to DFFML. I was like I was just browsing through a couple of peer, like Python Software Foundation organizations, mm -hmm. and uh, I found this like very interesting. How uh, like uh, like from what I like, I haven't really gone much through uh, like much through doc, but from the uh, based on what I understood, it's kind of like uh, related to pipelining you know, like setting up pipeline uh, formation and models. Yep. Yep. Like that's the like uh, vague overview of, like what I've understood and uh, I just wanted to like I attend the session so that I'll uh, get to know more about uh, DFFML in general. 
All right, great. So let me actually, I realize I'm not sharing my screen here. So that's the other thing. Uh, this meeting is a constant uh, reminder for me to share my screen. You guys will, uh, uh, this, this happens all the time. It's uh, some, for, someone is forgetting to share their screen. Usually it's me. So, all right, okay, so you guys can see the meeting minutes now, right? Um, uh, did the recording start because I don't really see any notes Yes, here. so, oh, so the recording, we, well, I'm, I'm recording using Open Broadcaster Studio. Okay. Um, so let's see, it's over here. Um, so, yeah, so we record, and then I post on YouTube. So, oh, and that's a good sort of, you know, after uh, recording posted. Recording posted on YouTube. So that is the what happens after the meeting. So, okay, so yeah, so we we are definitely very much related to you know defining pipelines and 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 models and then you know pipelines for model uh, uh, you know data set generation and, and model usage. Um, and and you know it's very much. Uh, you know, it's it's sort of the whole general machine learning workflow, right? And, and we have people from all sorts of different areas who have, uh, you know, come in and, 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 you know, built up this project, right? Um, and Hashim has been a, a big part of that. Uh, so, and we'll, we'll hopefully have some other, um, hopefully have some other people from past GSOC years and past contributors. Uh, you know, we have some people who have uh, participated as a part of GSOC and some people who have, uh, you know, just been on here and, 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 and hanging out and, and we all sort of get to know each other and we have fun working together on various machine learning problems, right? Uh, and various aspects of, of that. Uh, and there's also a lot of non-machine learning work to be done too, um, you know, just based on the fact that, you know, we have this sort of generic pipeline thing, right? Um, but yeah, we, we, you know, we have fun, we hang out, and, and we work on interesting stuff. So, uh, okay, so who wants to go next? Uh, could I go next? Yes. Yeah, so my name is Abhijit. I'm also from India. I am also uh, an undergrad student. Uh, I found this organization through GSOC. So while I was looking at um, what where I can start contributing, so I'm also pretty new to this. Up till now, I was mostly looking at uh, web-based uh, organizations and things like those. So this is my like, first time I'm uh, trying to look into more of a uh, 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 like ML side of things. So yeah, cool. Let's... So okay, so you have you done some web development work before, like front end, back end, or anything like that? Like e yes, like small work I've done in um, for sort of a uh, front end, back end, both. Okay, cool. With uh, Django or, or what kind of stuff have you worked with? Uh, I did a one project in Django. Uh, cool. It was like a small project uh, for uh, some sort of college uh, work where we had to do a final project and, and sim project sort of thing. And uh, basically my front end side, I mostly worked with either with React or Swift. All right. And I don't know how to spell uh, or, or pronounce uh, that other framework that you said, um, but uh, Sylviet, Sylviet, I know I've seen it, but I haven't yet tried to say it. It's just, you know, it's funny when you're off on the internet reading things, you have no idea how they're pronounced until somebody somebody else says it. Um, how do you spell that again, though? Uh, S-V-E-L-T, Swelt. I guess I might be wrong in the pronunciation. I no, 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 I think you're right. I, I think you're right. I'm not getting it right. Um, is it S-V-E? Okay, there we go, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, and then, uh, Banesh, So, what what kind of what kind of background and experience do you have? Oh, like uh, generally, I kind of started my, like, my program in C C language, mm -hmm. and then I kind of like shifted the transition to C plus plus, and then finally I ended up in Python. Like okay. Python is kind of like my uh, like major uh, language kind of thing. Like, okay. like, it's kind of like a native language at this point. Okay. And and what kind of projects have you done? Uh, projects. Uh, I also like work with Django. Mm -hmm. I, I work with Django, and currently I'm uh, like working on a Munstack application. Okay. Uh, and also, like, uh, I also like I have some experience related to like machine learning projects and all. Okay. Uh, recently, uh, like I, I will. I'm like currently working on a rec recommendation system. Mm, cool. It's like more. It's like. Uh, not really like kind of innovative kind of thing. I'm just uh, like going through a couple of blocks and uh, trying to like implement them and all 
Okay, cool. So, and the reason I ask, you know, uh, and I want to hear everybody's experiences because, you know, we have various issues. This this thing, yes, it's yes. a beast, right? Um, and so we have stuff all over the place. Um, and we've there's there's an HTTP side of things, uh, like an HTTP service uh, the the back end. Um, and then there's also, you know, there's the beginnings of a client app um, that's written in React right now. Um, and then, you know, of course, we have like the models um, and we have, uh, you know, the general pipelines and the operations. There was some work done to actually do like a distributed setting. Uh, actually, I got some of that working recently, but um, there's 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 places all over the place. So, you know, helping um, you know, letting people know what your current interests are. Like if you come if you, uh, communicating via Gitter or via this this meeting, you know, what, what kind of stuff you're interested in, what kind of stuff you're currently working on, there is likely a place for that somewhere in this project, right? Either as an example yeah. use case, or, you know, maybe we have some work to work on, uh, for example, with with uh, like the backend dev stuff, uh, you know, there is the, the HTTP API needs to be re refactored. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's work all over the place in different areas. So whatever you're most interested in, you know, calling that type of stuff out, uh, you know, help, helps us prioritize issues. So, okay, cool. So, uh, was it, uh, so it was, Ab so Binesh and Ab Ab how, how yes. do you pronounce your name? Binesh and uh, his name is like Abhijit. Abhijit? Abhijit, yeah. Abhijit. Okay, great. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, okay, Abhijit. All right, um, and then, so who, who wants to go next? Mm, so I'll go next. Uh, my name is Manas. I too, I'm from India. I'm a junior in undergrad. Uh, so I came across your uh, organization through PS, uh, PSF, and I was just uh, curious about your mission of statement, mission statement. You guys mentioned you heavily rely on data flows, which are basically directed graphs. That just caught my eye. I just wanted to know more about it, and I thought. Okay. Cool. Uh... Okay, so um, there's a lot of things in this space now. So a few years ago, there was not not a lot going on here um, as far as workflows, data flows. I mean, there's there's been a lot of data flow programming happening, you know, since forever. Um, but sort of, you know, as as far as like data flow plus ML stuff, um, it's kind of blown up recently. So uh, there's we really uh, need to update that. What? I said we really need to update that. Yeah, we do. We probably need to update that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we the, the, the focus is, and I'll pull up the, you know, the, the focus is abstracting the whole machine learning workflow, um, you know, and, and, uh, and, and the way that that is, uh, you know, done is is using data flows to a large extent right so or that is the goal so right now right now things are very uh all over the place there's many ways to do things right but the the and and we probably need to drop that because that's not you know what our docs reflect um where is it good uh so just to show what is the data flow um this is a data flow so this is you know it's a directed graph right you've got your your um purple things are you know basically little functions that run and then your your pink things are your inputs here right and so effectively you know that the, the if you if you have heard you may have heard that about machine learning before that feature engineering is like 80 percent of the work right so the goal behind data flows is you know make feature engineering easy Right, so make it really easy to don't don't focus on a data set. Focus on generating a data set, right? And if you focus on generating a data set, you can build new data sets. You can easily grab new in, inputs, uh, you know, for inference uh, because you can generate all the rest of the data you need for your model. Um, so uh, that that is not really the 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 sole focus, but it is you know a, a large part of it. There's really sort of three things that we focus on, um, which is you know data set generation, data set storage, and 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 then uh, usage with models, right? Um, and so the models are the most mature part of the project. There's been a lot of work done to. Um, uh, there's been a lot of work done to implement models off of uh, plugins. Uh, like we have this plugin architecture and
and um, basically, you know, a lot of the work that has been done is to to go and and look at you know maybe popular model architectures and wrap those as pre-trained or wrap APIs uh, of you know various machine learning frameworks um, to allow people to train their own models easily, right? With it with a sort of unified API. Um, so that that that's sort of you know m more of the focus here. Um, but yeah, uh, anything else? So what what kind of stuff have you done? What are you interested in? Um, I've done most of my work has been has been on data analytics. Okay. I've done an intern using our Tableau. I also have some experience in NLP. Uh, I worked on a in a hackathon. I worked on a uh, like a project uh, pro a product to summarize text, uh, mm -hmm. GitHub commits basically, and you know like auto assign buckets to it to automate the process. Okay. So is that like an unsupervised classification problem or uh, a clustering yeah, problem? Yeah, it was an unsupervised uh, classification problem. Okay. So was it clustering or classification? Did did you have um, you know did did you have pre-assigned uh, things that you bucketized them in, or did it sort of you know try to figure out on its own where they fit? Oh, okay, so I had to create the buckets myself. Okay, uh, I had to like um, come up with like the most used buckets, I would say, and mm -hmm. it just would just put the assign it to the buckets. Cool. And what kind of stuff are you interested in doing these days? Uh, so I started with uh, C++ myself mm -hmm. in high school, and I kind of transitioned into Python when I entered college. So most of my work, uh, my interests lie in machine learning. Um, so, I mean, I've been, I'm also currently looking into reinforcement learning. I, I have spent mm. quite a bit of my time in the past days looking at it. Cool. So, All right, do we have, who's next here? I can't see the full list of people, so I think, do we have Hashim? Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, hi, hi, guys, this is Hashim. Uh, I'm from Pakistan. I'm an undergrad student, uh, and uh, I'm, a, I'm about to graduate, actually. Um, I've been, I've, I first started uh, contributing to DFFML like two years ago, and I've been contributing on and off. Mm, yeah, I'm uh, mostly interested in uh, machine learning and deep learning, and most of my work is also related to that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Great, thanks, Hashem. Um, so, and and Hashem already cre also created a lot of these uh, tutorials, um, which have YouTube videos attached. Um, so these are really great. Um, let's see, are they on? Or maybe they're they're not in the latest release yet. Damn. Um, that's right. We need to do a release. So, okay. Um, or where are they? They're under examples. Notebooks, right at the front. Okay, so. Um, created notebooks and tutorial videos. Okay, and I'll link those. All right, and this this meeting minutes doc I will link also in the chat and here. All right. Um. All right. Okay. So let's go through and look at the uh you know what are we going to do today so um does anybody have let's see is there is I'll, I'll see hashem you might have something so is there anything that are open issues that people want to talk about today any anything in progress or that somebody no, i was... think we missed sure yeah. oh we did okay yes mm -hmm. like i said i couldn't see everybody so <laughs> um yeah no issues <laughs> hello everyone i'm sure i am also from india um and i'm interested in deep learning spend some time looking over how to train models and stuff in uh, tensorflow uh, and i want to start contributing to open source and i think dfml is one of the um ways i can start contributing since it heavily relies on machine learning cool application so yeah that's pretty much it 
All right, great. And you've 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 been uh, you've been on with us here for a few months now, right? Just off and on. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So. Um, okay. So let's go around and and let's see. So so uh, I know there there may be uh, those of us who have been around and working on things. Um, do you guys have anything that you're currently working on? And then we'll go to sort of perspective projects and, and, and perhaps issues that people might want to tackle. Um, I have a couple of PRs pending and uh, um, I don't, I don't even remember what I was. Yeah. That's a, it's been a while, that. right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, we don't need to discuss that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to know, uh, if there's something to catch up on. Yeah, so I think, and things have been slow. So basically, uh, we have this whole, the main thing that's been going on right now, as far as I'm concerned, is, um, and, and I've been saying this now for a long time, um, but uh, we need to, uh, we need to, uh, um, we need to split out this whole thing. So basically there are a lot of, like I was saying, there's plugins um, and there's a lot of different plugins. Um, and so uh, how many plugins do we have? I think we have like 20 some, 22, 23 at this point. So the architecture of the code is, or of the repo is such that uh, if you go, this is the main package, DFFML. This is probably worth, worth covering right now. So basically code structure. So DFFML, it's the main package, right? Um, and then everything else you'll hear this this you'll hear referred to as the main package, and then everything else you'll hear referred to as a plugin in the doc, docs. And then you know when we're talking about things. So if you go into the main package, you'll see a structure that relatively mirrors the uh, top level. That, so this would be the root of the repo, right? Because there's no path here, and then. Now we're in the main package, right? So we're in the DFFML directory, which is in the root of the repo. So within the DFFML package, you'll see things like accuracy, DB, DF, uh, model, operation, service, source, um, and then tuner. I think you've you done some work on the tuners, right? Uh, that'll be fun. Um, yeah. So these all, most, most of these are plugins. Actually, I think Pretty much all of these are plugins. Some of them are defunct. Uh, we need to remove port, I believe, um, and feature. So uh, these plugins, we'll go into the source one because this has got a pretty healthy list here. So these are all data sources. So basically, um, if you're looking at the uh, documentation um, and you're looking at the about and here, data set generation, machine learning, data set storage, these correspond to data set storage, right? And so basically you can store as a CSV file, you know, it could be a database, it could be a data, uh, data flow, you could pre pre processing with the data flow, it might be a directory of files. Um, and these are like the NumPy specific or the NIST ones. If you guys have, have seen the NIST data set, they're IDX3, IDX1. Um, and then, you know, JSON, uh, store things in memory, grab things from a specific operation. Um, and then, you know, there's some other helpers in here. All right. Uh, actually, there's one, there's an abstraction in here to actually help us write um, pre, pre, pre canned data sets as well. So, for example, you know, the iris, it, once again, the idea here is don't, we, we don't, we don't really like, store any data, right? We always generate the data or download the data, right? And this helps us have reproducible setups. So for example, this is the Iris training data set source, right? So we're gonna, we have this cache directory um, and you know, we, we're gonna, we're going to essentially, we download the data set and you know, we store it in the uh, cache directory and then we um, you know do a little find replace on the headers to make them more compatible with our CSV source um, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that if you haven't done a lot of Python before you may not have seen before in the code base so decorators are probably something that you have seen 
async is probably something that, that a lot of people may not have seen. Um, and then, you know, using things like, and, and await goes with async, and using things like yield are, uh, are generators, maybe things that people have not have seen. Um, so these, there are examples, basically the code base is your guide. Um, uh, if You may have heard people say, use use the source, Luke, uh, if you like Star Wars. Um, so basically there's, there's a lot of stuff in here. Git grep is your friend. Um, let's see what is on this terminal window. Can I show this? Yes. Okay. Um, Git grep is your friend, um, and it could you know you, you you can you can find examples of of most things. Wow. Okay. It doesn't want to go over. You can find examples of most things by looking through the source code, um, uh, you know, and just finding similar references now there's there's some good there's some great docs right um but they the code base is vast at this point so it is not um it is not uh guaranteed that there is a documentation for what you're looking for so for example git grep um what is something that we might want to know about um so cache download, because this is kind of a confusing one, right? So if I wanted to know more about cache download, there's a documentation page for it, and it, you know it explains what to do. But I, I might also want to understand more by looking at usages, right? So in that case, I would do you know git grep dash c gives me context of five lines on either side, um, and uh, you know I can look through the code for all the usages of cache download, and I can see you know how the arguments vary. Um, you know, here's the here's the definition of the function itself. Um, so that's th these are these are all helpful uh, you know things things to help you navigate the code base, right? Um, the other thing that is your friend is Git log, right? So we just looked at cache download, um, and we saw that it's defined in dfml utility net. Um, so we might want to go find out more about that, right? Um, and this git log dash p is a very useful um, command, right? So and I will paste these in the, the in the chat. Um, so uh, what was the other one I did? Um, uh, git grep. Git grep uh, dash c five cached download. So is it cache download? See, I can't even remember how to spell it, and I don't know how many times I've used this. Okay. Um, all right, so these are your friend. Um, uh, and so this dash P is very helpful. Um, so essentially, uh, Sahil hopefully will join us for a different meeting time. I know this meeting time is tough for him. So um, if you want to figure out why something is the way it is, you can go to the log here, right? And so dash P... So git git log, you know, tells you many things about um, you know what happened, right? Uh, but this isn't, you know, always the most helpful thing. You you sometimes you're looking for a specific, you know, you're like, I want to know what's going on with this cache download function. Why why am I not using it correctly? Well, maybe the arguments changed, right? So you might grep for it. You might find the definition in net. And then you might say, okay, well, what 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 happened there? Like, what happened recently? Oh, well, maybe it was related to this uh, fixed issue of progress being logged only on first download, right? And I might come in here and I might say that, oh, this validate protocol function changed. Maybe there was a bug in when we changed it, you know, how it changed. Um, so this git log dash p is is very helpful. And then you can identify the commit. And you know, often what you might do is uh, uh, you know, identify the changes, look for the file that you care about, identify the commit that changed, and then perhaps, you know, do a git log dash p and then with the commit and identify other files which changed as a result of this commit as well, right? So maybe in this one, we don't have a specific, this one, this one's not a good example because only uh, dfml util uh, net changed, but you might see ones where, let's see, here's Kubernetes stuff. Um, no, that one doesn't have multiple examples. Okay, subprocess run. Yeah, this, oh, this is here. There's recent changes to um, samples. Should I, should I, Java dependency check. Okay, so this thing changed recently. Um, and it changed, uh, where did it change? Okay, here. So stream output logs. So it started, where did we go? we use this run command, right? So this run command was implemented somewhere and then it was used. So if I look back at this command, 
commit here, I would see, you know, okay, so here's using run command, and shortly before it, I've added this run command helper, right? So you can, you can, this is some, some tools you can use to find more context on the code uh, if you're confused about why things are the way they are. Um, okay, so let's get back. Okay, so PR is pending. Um, yeah, okay, so why did we go into all that? Um, well, we were diving through the code base. Um, I got off on a tangent there. So there's the sources, right, um, which map to um, the dataset storage abstraction. Um, and then there's um, models, which are light, very light within the main package itself. There's basically the uh, um, um, uh, simple linear regression model. Um, or yeah, logistic regression model, um, which exists within the main package. Um, and then most everything else is implemented based off of uh, different libraries like TensorFlow or, you know, PyTorch or um, Scikit. So if we go, so now we're in the root of the repo, right? And if we were going into model, we would see here's our machine learning libraries that that we know right uh, these are ma mostly mo a lot of major libraries here right so if we clicked into scikit so yeah, scikit's actually a pretty messy one but uh not not messy in that it's messy it's 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 pretty clean but it's not going to be the most obvious example so uh xg boost um this is pretty pretty obvious example so uh let's see let's look at the regressor so basically this is the the and the way things are structured there's basically config objects and classes um and so the config objects holds everything that you need to know about a um this this is like the static definition of an object right um and and the, the reason why we do this is so that we can serialize things and save things to disk, right? So we don't we don't mix and match. Um, you if if you put something in a config object, you you basically can assume that you can reinstantiate whatever the 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 main object is, right? So the XBG regressor model, right? Just from the config, right? So if I made a JSON file that had all this stuff in it, and then I loaded it and I passed it to this thing. I would have the same object, right? Uh, effectively, not not actually the same instance, but you know, it it will do the same thing, right? I can I can count on it to do the same thing, right? So you may have some state within the model uh, that happens after it's loaded, uh, but but effectively, all of the configuration happens via this um, config object, um, and each each object within DFML has follows this pattern. Um, so. Let's see. Uh, the other thing that is important to know, I think basically the, the rest of the code base follows the same thing. So basically there's the models, there's the sources, right? So there's a MySQL source right now. I think I have a Mongo source that I have, I'm going to add. Um, and then, you know, here's the HTTP service, which is what I was talking about. This is the backend uh, service that you can use um, to, uh, uh, you know, as, as a, a microservice type thing, right? Uh, if you wanted to deploy, you know, if you wanted to use all of the same command line or Python APIs, but over HTTP, you could do it this way. And this needs to be changed. Okay, so any, I think we covered generally the code structure. We covered, you know, if you find something in the code structure, how do you find other things, you know, other examples of it? We covered, um, you know, how do you see the history of, of those, of, of the usages and, and of the code? Uh, let's see. Uh, the other thing we need, to, we covered the config object, which is a major concept. Um, then the last thing that we need to cover probably is this double context entry pattern. Um, and then testing. And that sort of should get a, give everybody a, a pretty good overview. Um, Hashim, do you have anything else that you think would be a good, and then, then sort of docs, do you have anything else that would be a good, good sort of general entry um, stuff? I don't know if uh, everybody's gone through the contributing section. Mm, that's important. Yeah. So we'll, yes. we'll, let's, let's remind me if I don't say that when we get to docs. So the, this, this, so along with the config, right? So you'll see this is the SLR model. So this, these 
uh, properties correspond to the properties from the config object, the, the SLR model config. Um, so you can pass properties directly to the object, or you can pass them to a config, and then you can pass the config to an object. Um, and once again, you know this is all for serialization, because uh, we, we define things. So we want to be able to save things to disk. We also want to be able to, um, these data flows, the you want to be able to run them anywhere, uh, which means that, you know, I might want to run them on a different machine. Uh, and that was kind of that Kubernetes stuff that I was just showing. Uh, and from that perspective, you know, you're going to need to be able to, to, to transmit all of your configuration information uh, in a serializable fashion over a network connection, which means they have to be in this, these, you know, these serializable config objects, right? So, um, uh, after you've instantiated your object, um, the, the general pattern of usage is this double context entry, uh, which is covered under the, the tutorial section. Now, the, the sort of the general users of DFML, you know, may not see the double context entry pattern, right? And, and that's because we have these high level functions, which are an interface to, to many of the things that you can do, right? So the high level function uh, train, you know, it trains a model, takes a data set. Accuracy, you know, assesses the model's accuracy, which this, okay, this is the old version of the docs. Let me go on the master branch. Um, is everybody here will, will likely work off the master branch. Um, it assesses the model's accuracy. And then, you know, prediction, you know, makes predictions given the, the, the data set that we want predictions on, right? But you don't see a double context entry here. So that's because these high level functions hide that uh, double context entry. And what is within predict and score and train looks like this, which is first you instantiate or first you like we've instantiated the model, we'd pass it to predict score train uh, and then those functions will enter the context of those objects, right? And so this is, if you, if, the reason why we do this is because there's a lot of things that follow this pattern. For example, like loading a model, right? So if I have a model that's saved on the disk, um, the first thing that I'm going to do you know, to use it is I have to load any saved state, right? If it, if it already existed. Um, and to do that, um, uh, to do that, I, I enter the context of the main object. So there's parent and then context. So this this would be the parent object, the model, and this memory source is a parent object or, or just the main object. And then, so you enter that context, right? So basically you, you load the model from the disk if it, if it exists on disk in Tempter. Um, and then, you know, for a memory source, you know, this is just a source backed out of memory. So we're defining these objects, you know, right here. Uh, but if I had like a, a JSON source, you know, I'd be loading it from, from the disk there within this, uh, uh, within, what does it look like? Let's just show you guys. So this corresponds to, um, there was a good example of this two seconds ago. It was model XDG boost XDG regressor. So this corresponds to this initial entry corresponds to these the anytime you see async with that's just, that's a enter and a exit, right? So a enter happens effectively when you do an async with, um, so is when we do this statement, when we're done with this block here, before we enter this inner block, Python calls for us the a enter method on an object. And now when we leave the block, Python calls the a exit method. And the reason why we, we leverage this, this is called the context manager. And the reason why we leverage this heavily is because it is very easy to forget to clean stuff up, um, right? So for example, if I have temporary files that my model creates, right? Or if I have, um, yeah, any any sort of temporary resources, right? We this this ensures that if you create them, you free them, um, because Python will do that for us with the with block, right? So first, what happens is we end up in this a enter of the the parent object, and then the parent object will create this this when we 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 can call these objects, and that creates an instance of a context, right? 
And an instance of a context is actually sort of like the object in memory that we would actually use for things, right? So I may do several things on my object in memory, right, before I save it back to disk, right? And so this is an optimization around, um, you know, the fact that I don't want to save and load these things all the time, right? So basically, I can just keep them alive. You know, I can, I can, I can keep them open for as long as I want. I can do as many, you know, trainings or whatever as I want, and then I can flush it to disk, right? But, you know, sometimes I may want to use the high-level API, and I want to just have that done for me. So this will save and flush to disk each call. But sometimes I know for sure that I'm going to, you know, have a specific sequence of events, and I'm not going to need to to have that flush to disk done for me, right? So I'm just going to do this this double context entry ma manually, and it allows for you know an optimization on that, right? Um, if you wanted to. Okay, so double context entry, and then we said, ooh, let's see, we we're going to talk about docs. What did it, what else did I say? context entry okay we'll talk about docs okay so this is the main documentation site there's also the master branch docs um, so you those of us who work on you know the, the people who consume the project they care about the master branch or they care about you know the release docs right and this right here says what version you're working on in the top left hand corner um, uh, the people who are working on the project, we care about these master branch docs. Um, and that's because, you know, this is what, what, what we see here uh, in master is what we see here in the documentation. Um, and so when we submit pull requests um, and we want to, you know, change the way the code works or change the way the docs work, that shows up here on this page. And, and right now we have an open issue for the fact that these are all blown up here. Um, these are one level higher than they should be, uh, all these headers. So navigating around, you'll find that, you know, the tutorials generally tell you how do you, we talked about the plugins, right? The tutorials generally tell you how do you implement a plugin, right? Um, so if I wanted to implement a new kind of model, I would go to the models tutorials, right? And I would say, you know, uh, first it, it, it walk me, you know, generally through how do I use a model? So first off, you want to probably look at the quick start. Um, you know, that's the general thing. But this is this model tutorial for many of you is going to be what you're most interested in, because uh, a lot of people I know are very interested in doing models. Um, so this will take you through generally, you know, how do how do we use a model? We have both a Python API and a and a and a command line client API. Um, and so this talks about the the Python API, and then there's another example here which walks you through the command line. Um, and then we get into, well, okay, so there, there's there's several several um, stages, and, and the model one is the most flushed out here at this point, but you can do this for anything. So um, everything is defined using this plugin system, which is this entry point based system, which is a, a Python construct uh, entry points. Uh, they're a way to register plugins in Python packages. Um, and so, you know, if you're curious about that, you could go, you know, leverage the entry point system in a different project if you wanted to, or you could, you know, uh, use some of the stuff that DFML does. Obviously, we have a lot of work built up to make those more uh, effective, right? Um, so, you know, you can load things by name, right? So what you'll notice is that in the setup py file for the main project or if you're looking in the um we'll look in a model since we're looking at models or if we're looking at models we would be looking at the setup config file um this oh wait no that's right uh they actually have their own oh maybe this one is not up to date Uh, this one is not up to date. Okay, that's fine. So usually this this may be in a entry points txt file. It may be in setup.config. It may be in setup.py. We have models from uh, four years now, I think. So not all of them are in the same place. Um, but the, the right place for them to be would be entry points uh, txt. Um, and so you'll see that that under these entry points, this is where we register plugins. And we say for the dffml.model, right, which corresponds to our source tree where we went from you know d 
DFML from the root of the repo to the main package. And then we went into model, right? So here's, you know, the, the generic definition of a model, right? And so uh, we are saying that, you know, this these models that we're going to register here correspond to the generic definition of a model, right? And they are the TF DNNC and TF DNNR. So the the deep neural network classifier and the deep neural network regressor. Um, and so they then you'll see this entry point style path, which is a Python path, right? Which is, you know, the same as a regular Unix path or, or Windows path that you'd see. But instead of a backslash or a forward slash, you have a dot. Um, and so model TensorFlow and it's relative to wherever this file is. So model TensorFlow is this directory, right? So we see this path, which says DF of ML model TensorFlow. So we go in there. And we say, it says dot DNNC. So we go in here. And then it says colon, DF, or it, it has a colon, and it says DNN classifier model, which is actually down here, right? So this is the object. And then you'll notice that when you look at the object here, you'll have this entry point decorator on top of it, which tells it, hey, uh, you <laughs> this, this helps us map back so that we have we have like a two-way map here um, because the uh, Python files don't know about the setup files or the setup files do know about the Python files so this guy says you know DNNC and then oh oh I forgot to actually make a new tab um, and then the other one will say hey okay yes I am DNNC by putting this little at entry point on itself right here right and then that that there's your entry point style path. Okay, so um, so this you know this is how we leverage the plugin system. You can load any of these things dynamically, or you can just instantiate and import them as you normally would any Python uh, object, right? With the regular import stuff. Uh, and after that, you know, you use them, and then you there's tutorials on how to write each type of plugin, right? And so this will take you through. Okay, you know what what does a model do? What kind of class do I need? What kind of methods do I need? And then also uh, the model one is uh, a little bit farther than the other ones where it has, how do I actually package this, right? And it'll take you through, there's a thing that creates packages for you, um, which creates that setup.config. And this, it will generate a DFML package, which you can then publish on PyPy. Um, and uh, so that's part of this whole thing that, that we've been working on is, is you know, we want to have this second and third party plugin ecosystem where people can publish their own plugins, right? Um, and then we can build this community library. Like I said, we have 22 or 23 plugins right now, um, but they're all sort of constrained to this source tree, right? They're all stuck in this Git repo. Um, and so we're trying right now to, to, to split them out and make it so that everybody can put them wherever they wanted, right? Right. Um, you know, you could host them under your own GitHub repo or we can host them under the DFML org. Um, and, and, and that way there will be, you know, m mini plugins from all over the place. Uh, then so that's generally, you know, how the plugins work, where you find the documentation on how to write each plugin, how uh, you can follow these to, to, to write new plugins. Um, and then, you know, we have the example usage, which is, okay, well, how do you use all this stuff, right? And so you're likely going to want to go and take a look at the examples first to understand, you know, what are the kinds of things that have been done um, and, and that people are doing uh, with that, that previous students have done and written stuff on. And I would start with all the stuff that Hashim has done, um, where he has these videos and there's a YouTube playlist. Um, and... Uh, Hi there. And he, he has, you know, he's done a great job of setting all these up, right? So reach out, uh, reach out to us on the Gitter channel if you have questions as you're going through this stuff. Um, uh, you know, as you're familiarizing yourself with the project, if this is, you know, something that you find that you, that you really want to work on and you want to, you know, help build out um, cool use cases and, and plugins to make it so that, you know, people can easily, you, you know, you want to make it easy to to build and deploy uh, models and, and train new models, right? This is what we're doing, right? So, um, you know, and, th and this is how we're, we're doing it and how we're structuring it. Um, and then, you know, there's the Gitter channel uh, where we talk a lot and we've thought about switching to a different chat, but right now we're, we're sort of just stuck over there. Um, so, I think I missed what I said to remind me about. Um, did I get 
Yeah, the contributing section. Oh, okay, the contributing section. Of course. Okay, well, that's a good thing to end on here. So the contributing section is uh, documents largely how we work together, right? Um, because we're all, I mean, there's people from all over the world here. So, um, and, and it covers things like testing, um, talking about, uh, I need to update the GSOC stuff. Um, uh, and... Um, testing documentation it, it covers a lot of what we covered here there's probably some of what we covered here that needs to be added to this so if anybody feels like um you know they want to go get um you know some some contribution experience going through the recording and, and adding some of the stuff we talked about about code base layout and notes would be awesome um and uh you know there's stuff about how we actually publish the releases um you know this is uh you know the, the process that we go through to publish the release uh there's stuff about the documentation testing so this is these all the documentation pages we did an analysis of this i think at some point last year we want to make sure that everything is tested um because there's so many of us that work on this project and everybody is sort of an expert in their thing right that's why we went around and said well you know what are you interested in on uh you know everybody will write their stuff and then we need to make sure that there's lots of tests because as we go forward the rest of us are not experts in in specific you know use cases right so we need to make sure that we're all writing a lot of tests um that that help us uh you know those those help us work together effectively right because if i if you don't have a test for the thing that you added to the documentation then i don't know if my change breaks your tutorial right um so and we want to make sure everybody's stuff stays on this website you know and stays getting used and and, and um uh, you know, out here for others to see, right? So uh, start, go through this contributing documentation. There's a lot of headings here, but not a ton of content, right? Um, and you'll see, you know, this is one of the things that happens all the time. So I'll call this out explicitly, but look at this, who's working on what section, uh, because this tells you, you know, the, the guidelines, because there's, uh, yeah, this tells you the guidelines. Um, essentially, uh, don't ask if you can work on something, just do it. Uh, unless you see things that fall under this, the rest of this, this uh, documentation here, which is basically if somebody else said that they started work on it, you, you should let them work on it, right? Um, so, you know, if, 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 if you go ahead and work on anything that hasn't been declared yet, if you need more advice, please ping in the Gitter channel because it's very hard to manage um, uh, for me personally, and I know for other people, um, not all of us are subscribed to all of the issues. So there's other people in here, like Hashim is, is you know, uh, we're, we're trying to, once once we can get our permissions ironed out on things, you know, Hashim will be one of our maintainers and we'll have other maintainers. Uh, but right now, uh, those people don't have the ability to go subscribe to all the notifications. So please ping on Gitter if you have a question about it, an issue or you need more context, because a lot of them need more context, but we'll probably go through and start talking about things in meetings more and then flush out those issues, um, you know, as things ramp up for GSOC season. Um, okay, uh, we are getting probably kicked off Google Meet pretty soon here, um, but uh, does anybody have any final questions uh, for the day? We'll we'll move to the next, uh, or I'll move to my next meeting, and everybody can can. Can I say a few things? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so uh, I know it can be t intimidating starting out uh, in a new uh, project, but uh, you know just uh, focus on uh, reading the documentation. It's uh, it's your friend right there, and uh, the tutorials made it very easy now, uh, especially the videos. And if you have any issues, you can always uh, reach out. Everybody's helping each other in this community. And uh, uh, all the meetings are available on uh, YouTube as well. That uh, That's always helped me to you know get back to issues that I had problem uh, understanding and all that. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> cool. Well, Great. One last thing. Uh, there are good first issues that you can hunt for, you know, uh, if you're starting out. Yes, and, and some of those, so some of those have, I think most of the ones that they've labeled good first issue have enough information, but 
uh, you know, these there's there's a lot of issues in there, and and what usually happens is it's us in this meeting jotting stuff down as we go, right? And so you saw me writing meeting minutes a little bit, right? But as as if if I'm the one presenting and taking meeting minutes and then creating issues, sometimes we have other like sometimes other people create issues, uh, but a lot of it is just sort of jotting stuff down as we go. So there's not a lot of information in a lot of the issues, right? So if you see something that sounds mildly interesting, but there's not, um, you know, enough information in there ping and getter, right? Um, because we'll figure out how do we get more information on that issue to provide you more context, right? Um, well, cool. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and the last thing is, as since we have a few people who are new here, I would really, really love it if um, we could put any feedback um, on anything. So basically, if you're not if something is even just the slightest bit unclear, you know, if you're if something confuses you, uh, please post it in this um, in in this discussions thread uh, because we need to under like the main thing that we need to figure out is how to make sure that it's easy for people to understand, you know, what the project does and uh, uh, and and uh, you know how how you know they can use it and contribute to it. Right. So any feedback, even if it's just a random thought, even if it's just like the tiniest little bit of information, kind of like some of the issues, just throw it in this thread because uh, that way we can, you know, we can ask you later for more information. We can talk about it in the meeting. Uh, but if we don't have it anywhere, then we don't know how to improve. Right. Uh, and, and we're all just we're, we're all about working together to improve. You know, we're, we're just having fun here and, and trying to trying to make some cool code. Right. So sweet. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, and we might have another meeting later this week. I know that uh, Sahil has some stuff and there was somebody else uh, who um, said they were working on something uh, CNN model um, recently. So so we might have another meeting this week. We might just do next week. I need to reschedule this time because I think we'll probably go earlier. Um, uh, oh, and we forgot to talk about the logo. OK, we did a lot of intro today. Um, all right, well, Google's going to kick us out. So we'll have to do another meeting later in the, in the week. So maybe Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Um, might be a good time. Does that sound good for people? Uh, that's Thursday morning, my time. So I think that might be... Uh, I think... Uh, Hashim, you're the, you're the one... You're the only one who's not... Everybody else is in IST, right? Time zone? Yeah. What time zone are you in? Um, I think it's just a uh, one hour difference. So one hour difference good. before. Yeah. Okay. So that, I yeah. think that's like six thirty for you and seven thirty p.m. for everybody else. Um, yeah. Does that sound? Does everybody sound good with that? Does anybody have a different time suggestion? Would you guys yeah, like to yeah. go an hour later? Or... That's fine. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's yeah, do it. exactly. It's better. All right. Sounds good. So I'll uh, I'll see you guys um, at. Um, you know, 7.30, some of you guys' time, 6, 6.30 p.m. your time, Hashim, and, and 6 a.m. my time. <laughs> it's always fun working together on these <laughs> all over. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye, everyone.